Today I'll be comparing the DIY Omnipod loop system and Tandem's T-Slim X2 insulin pump with Control IQ. Since Control IQ has just been released in Canada, I wanted to give you my perspective as someone who's used a DIY system for the past several years and has recently been testing out Control IQ over the past month. If you're wondering what a DIY or do-it-yourself system is, I highly recommend watching this video first where I discuss Night Scout, Loop, and the DIY movement in detail. Just briefly, both of these pumps are hybrid closed loop pumps, which means that they use an algorithm and continuous glucose monitoring data to automate insulin delivery. For instance, if your CGM tells the system that your blood sugar is going high, the pump will increase insulin delivery. And if your BG is going low, it will decrease insulin delivery. These systems act more like a normal pancreas, and research has shown that they increase time and range and improve quality of life. They are called hybrid closed loop pumps and not artificial pancreases because the user still needs to manually account for insulin needs by bolusing before meals or letting the system know about exercise, for example. Omnipod Loop is not a Health Canada approved system. It's a DIY solution that the T1D community has implemented while waiting for a better alternative. Tandem's T-Slim with Control IQ is a commercially available system that is Health Canada approved. Today I'll be looking at a few categories, namely setup, site changes, wearability, user interface, battery, price, and algorithm. First, let's compare setup. When you buy the T-Slim pump, Tandem offers pump training with a certified diabetes educator, and they even have a simulation app shown here where you can learn how to use the pump from your phone. My pump did not come with Control IQ installed, so I had to update the software myself. My local pump rep emailed me a link to complete an online training module. I got a certificate when I was done the module and had to email it back to the pump rep in exchange for an ID code that would allow me to install the new update. Then you sit back, relax, and wait for the update to finish installing. Once you do all that, you have to turn on Control IQ in your pump and enter the rest of your settings, which are familiar if you used an insulin pump before. If not, your diabetes care provider can help you determine these numbers. The only new thing for Control IQ is you need to enter your weight and total daily dose. The other thing to note is that when you turn on Control IQ, your target BG is hard-coded at 6.1 and your duration of insulin action is hard-coded at 5 hours. These values cannot be changed. Omnipod loop setup is a lot more involved. There are many steps to follow on the LoopDogs website. You need an Apple developer membership and access to an Apple computer so you can use a program called Xcode to download the app onto an iPhone. Since this is not an approved system, the only place for support is other users on platforms like the Looped Facebook group. Once you actually get the app installed on your iPhone, it's easy to enter your settings and there is no limit to what you choose for your target BG like there is with Control IQ. There are a few new settings such as suspend threshold and automatic boluses depending on your code branch. The Loop Docs and Loop Tips websites can help you learn about and fine tune all of these settings. Because of the steep learning curve for DIY Omnipod Loop and Tandem's customer support, I think that the T-Slim wins the setup category. Now let's talk about site changes. Starting with the T-Slim, here I have an infusion set, a syringe, a reservoir, insulin, the needle, alcohol prep pad, and the pump. Tandem has a few more steps involved in site changes than I was used to with other pumps. One example is filling the reservoir, which is a plastic bag encased in that black cartridge. You need to draw air out of it with the syringe before you fill it up with insulin to prevent air bubbles. Next, you have to pop out the old reservoir from the pump, which can be done using a coin. After that, you go to Options, Load, Change Cartridge, and it will stop insulin delivery. Then you put your new cartridge in and let the pump detect it. I like to insert my infusion set while this is happening. I'm using the Verisoft infusion sets which are similar to the Medtronic Silhouette. After that, you connect the tubing to the reservoir by twisting the two ends together. Then you tap on Fill Tubing and wait for it to fill. 
the pump will always fill a minimum of 10 units. When you see drops of insulin, you need to press stop. The pump will start detecting insulin, and then you can connect the tubing to your infusion set. Then go back into the load screen and tap on Fill Cannula. Then tap the blue check mark, and you're done. Next up is Omnipod Loop. Here I have a package that contains a pod, a syringe, and needle, an Emma link, but a Riley link can also be used, insulin, alcohol prep pad, and an iPhone with the Loop app. The first step is to open up the package and take everything out. The Omnipod can hold a maximum of 200 units of insulin, whereas the T-Slim holds a max of 300. You inject the insulin into the pod and listen for two beeps to indicate that the pod is in pairing mode. Next, you let the app pair with the pod using the Emma or Riley link as a connection bridge. Once it's paired, it will automatically start priming and you can hear a clicking noise. After it's done, the app will instruct you to remove the needle cap and adhesive backing from the pod and apply it to your body. Then you tap on Insert Cannula and listen for this ominous sound. Just kidding, it doesn't hurt too much when the cannula goes in, it just feels like a little pinch. But after it does, you're done. Tandem sight changes are cumbersome, take longer, and have more steps. They also leave me with two large sharps to dispose of. Omnipod Loop, on the other hand, is relatively straightforward and easy. For that reason, I think Omnipod wins this category. I've found that hiding Tandem's needles like this can be helpful until I can dispose of the sharps safely. Omnipod's needle is much smaller in comparison. Next, I'm going to compare wearability. The obvious difference here is that the T-Slim has tubing, whereas Omnipod is a tubeless pump. That means that when you're doing activity with the T-Slim, it needs to be clipped onto your clothes and the tubing can get in the way. If you're familiar with tube pumps, then you know the struggle with doorknobs and getting tangled in bed if you sleep without pajamas. You also need to unclip before you have a shower or go swimming because the pump is not fully waterproof. Omnipod, on the other hand, is fully waterproof, so you don't have to worry about these problems. The T-Slim connects directly to your CGM, but with Omnipod Loop, you have to keep your phone and the Emma or Riley link within close range for the system to work. So even though you aren't tethered by tubing, you still kind of feel tethered to these two devices. Running is much easier with the Omnipod though, and when I run outside, I carry my phone and the Emma link around my waist in this belt that I bought from the running room. Not having tubing is great, but also not having to keep my phone around me is great. It's almost a tie, but I think Omnipod Loop wins this category for me because of the freedom of not worrying about unclipping, suspending insulin delivery, and then resuming every time I get near water. Next, I'll be comparing the user interface. Both systems use a touch screen to enter boluses and adjust your settings. The Loop app is on your iPhone, and I think overall feels more intuitive than the T-Slim. One thing I quickly noted with the T-Slim is that you can't set a duration for exercise mode. You have to remember to go in and manually turn it off after you're done exercising. The Loop app has a feature called Temporary Overrides, where you can program different situations that may affect insulin needs and set a duration so you don't need to remember to turn them off. The T-Slim has a good UI, but there are a few things that could make their software more user-friendly. The pump is updatable, so perhaps Tandem will make improvements in the future. The Loop app, by comparison, is really customizable and easy to use, and for that reason, I think Omnipod Loop wins this category. Now I'm going to be comparing battery life. The T-Slim has a rechargeable battery that lasts for about three days. It is annoying when you need to recharge it because you feel connected to a power outlet. You can't really do it while you sleep because you might get tangled in cords. One solution that I've found is to recharge while I'm driving and keep the battery topped up that way. Omnipod is a disposable pump, so after you run out of insulin or three days have passed, you simply deactivate the pod with the app and collect them in this blue bag to be recycled. I charge my phone every night and the Emma link lasts about three to five days on a single charge. If you're going traveling or going camping, you can keep these devices charged with external battery packs. There's also a new orange link, which apparently lasts for two to three weeks on two AAA batteries. Keeping the T-Slim charged has been a bit more annoying for me compared to the Omnipod Loop, 
because I can simply charge the Emma Link and my iPhone overnight. For that reason, I think Omnipod Loop wins this category as well. Next, let's compare their price. This is a table I made comparing different pump options we have available in British Columbia. The Omnipod is 100% covered by BC Pharmacare, and with a $150 US dollar Riley link, can become a hybrid closed loop system. The T-Slim, on the other hand, costs $7,000 and is not covered by BC Pharmacare. Unless you have extended health coverage, the T-Slim is much more expensive than Omnipod Loop would be. For this reason, Omnipod Loop wins the price category. Lastly, I'll be comparing the algorithms. Both of these algorithms are great and work better for me than conventional insulin pumping. With Omnipod Loop, you can see how the algorithm titrates your basal rate on a Night Scout site and how your boluses and overrides correlate to glycemic variability. The algorithm for Loop is all open source and you can see exactly how it works on GitHub. Control IQ is more of a black box because it is Tandem's intellectual property. You can see different symbols when the system is increasing or decreasing insulin delivery, but you can't quantify what the pump is actually doing. I was very surprised at how well Control IQ worked for me. It keeps me in range more than Omnipod Loop, even though the BG target is 6.1. This is a report from a week of wearing Control IQ where I have 80% time in range. Omnipod loop depends heavily on your program settings like carb ratio, basils, and insulin sensitivity. If those aren't dialed in, there can be times when Omnipod loop doesn't work as well. I found Control IQ to be less reliant on these values, and for whatever reason, it just works really well for me. Of course, I've only worn it for a month. Other people may have different experiences with the algorithm, but for now, Tandem wins this category for me. My final verdict is that I'll be sticking with Tandem's Control IQ system. The algorithm is the most important thing for me, and I found that Control IQ keeps me in range more than the DIY Omnipod loop system. I also like that I can reach out to an actual company's customer support if I have any issues with the system, and I don't have to worry about iOS updates or Xcode or GitHub. Even though the Omnipod loop system wins in most of the other categories that I talked about, I'm willing to put up with all of the annoying things about Tandem's T-Slim pump for the control that it gives me. I still see a place for Omnipod loop in my life if I'm going on vacation or maybe to the beach. It might be nice to temporarily go tubeless for a while, but I still see Tandem's Control IQ being the primary um, insulin pump in my life going forward. Just quickly, I want to talk about some exciting developments in the pipeline. Tandem is working on fixing a lot of the things I find annoying with the T-Slim pump. They are currently waiting for FDA approval for a mobile bolus delivery feature using their app, so you'll be able to bolus from your phone just like with Omnipod Loop. They're also working on a next-gen insulin pump called the T-Sport, which will be about half the size of T-Slim X2. It will have a 200-unit cartridge, and be fully controlled via a separate device or their app. This is a picture of a different patch pump just to give you an idea of what it might look like. It's kind of like a blend between the Omnipod and the T-Slim X2. As for Omnipod Loop, Tidepool has taken on the task of building an FDA regulated loop app for the iOS App Store. It will be interoperable with the newer Bluetooth pumps, which means you won't need a Riley Link or an Emma Link as a connection bridge anymore. They recently submitted their application with the FDA, so keep an eye out for it to be released in the U.S. sometime in the near future.